man and woman are all components that exist in this deity called God. Are you listening to me? And so, he, he separating them is an act of his sovereignty and wisdom in an attempt to show the world the multifaceted dimensions that consist in him. Because in Genesis 1.26, the woman was still in the man when God pronounced the dominion word. That's why gender is not a yardstick for you not to walk in dominion. And for winners, your double portion this year. When God was blessing man, he said, let them. He had not done that separation. Hallelujah. And so the prophetic word that was given for the dominion of man also involved the woman. And then the separation only came because God wanted to show their unique characteristics. Are you listening to me? So every lady is a reflection of a dimension that is contained in God. Every man is a reflection of a dimension that is contained in God. Are you listening to me? The world with men alone will rob humanity of a dimension that they may never be able to see. The world with women alone will rob... Are you listening to me? And so, the harmonious coexistence of man and woman is what gave us a possibility that there can be reproduction. That is a dimension of God. That there is an ability in God that is able to reproduce himself in others. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. And so, he began to give us the possibility of a man reproducing himself. And what was God's idea behind the distinguishing of a man and woman. He was supposed to be his medium. Listen to me. Because the Bible says God made man. Adam named all the animals. He saw them two by two. Do you realize that it was not Adam's opinion to have a woman? He didn't go to God and say, Lord, I need a woman. No. He did not even know that there is such a possibility that you can have an opposite sex to relate with. It was totally God's idea. Hallelujah. God would have created an angel or something or a musician to keep him lonely. He said, it is not good for man. In other words, this my dimension will not be complete until there is another that completes the equation. That is why God caused man to sleep. And out of that man, he took the other side and made a woman. And when Adam saw her, he said, woman. Are you following me now? And so, uh, this is just an introduction to help us understand that the society, right now we have all kinds of movements. Movements for the ladies are angry because they feel that, we're talking about made in his image. Hallelujah. The women are angry because they feel they have been marginalized by society. And there are all kinds of foundations. Women are life foundations. Strive for your right foundation. And so on and so forth. Everybody is rising up. And the men are saying, are you joking? We are the head. And so there is a contention. Tonight, in these few minutes, I want to reveal to us the position and the organogram. The strategy of God, according to his design, made for a man and a woman. And if you learn to stand in that posture in the spirit, then you will reflect the character of Christ, as far as gender is concerned. There is a posture that a woman will assume that she will be a misrepresentation of the dimension of Christ. Are you listening to me? Because her composition does not permit her to walk in that posture. For instance, the Bible says that the man is the head. The Bible did not say the man is the head of the woman. The Bible says the man is the head of his wife. Many people don't read scripture and they go ahead seeing every woman anywhere. You just see another person's wife and you want her to you usurp authority. Uh-uh. He was talking about a family relationship. Hallelujah. So you don't just step into a visitor's house and tell the woman, give me water, give me this. What kind of stupid... Uh-uh. A man is the head of his wife. Hallelujah. That is why the church that is called the bride of Christ... If you give your life to Christ, what happens? You come and submit into the governing authority of that husband called Jesus. Are you listening to me? So that Jesus, who is the husband of the bride called the church, now becomes the head of that wife called his bride. And when you look at it from the perspective of family, it's responsibility. Hallelujah. What, what is responsibility? The ability to understand the cost component of life. Realize that for everything in life, there is sacrifice, there is cost. And someone must pay the price to make something happen. 
Hallelujah. Number two, the, the dimension of man according to the design of God was supposed to reveal resilience and endurance and strength. Hallelujah. This is why a man according to his design, when a man runs away from challenges, he's not revealing the dimension of God. A woman can do that. That's why in ancient times during war, they kept the women and children aside. And they said the men who are supposed to reveal the dimension of God as a warrior, they have been designed to survive pain. Are you listening to me? In their composition is the ability to stand pressure. Are you learning something? Number three. The dimension of God that is put in a man is that dimension that um, helps a man respond to honor, helps a man respond to power, helps a man respond to influence. These are all dimensions that are obtained in God. But he poured it in this person called a man. So that if you find yourself walking in that dimension, you will be revealing something about Christ. When you understand this, you will know what love means. Now look up, please. With these few definitions I've given you, let me tell you what love means for a man. Can I have one gentleman and one lady? I want to hurry up. I'm out of time. One guy, one lady. Come on, winners. You are smart people. Can I have one lady, one bold lady? I appreciate her. Listen, learn to celebrate success. Successful people are those who have done what you may not have been able to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, I want to be your friend tonight, so let's, let's... Now, this is a gentleman, correct? And this is a lady. Is that correct? Any confusion? Praise God. If you have any confusion, I'm glad the servants of God are here. We'll get that devil out in Jesus' name. This is a man, this is a woman. Now, listen to me. If you tell this lady, I love you, in her world, based on the dimension of God that has been fashioned, you spoke something else. Correct? When you tell this guy I love you in his world, based on this configuration that I've given you, that is supposed to be the derivative of the definition of love. They do not mean the same thing in both worlds. Are you following me? For instance, love for a man simply means two things. Purpose and respect. Very simple. There's no long story about it. Hallelujah. Every time you attempt to tell a man that you love him is not so much of the emotional dimension. Are you listening to me? It is a sense of respect. So if you, show, if you tell me you love me, I say I'm watching. Words don't mean so much to men. It is the action. I watch the way you serve me. I, you are responding to a dimension that is put in me. Are you listening to me? So many men do not even know what love means to them because they do not understand what dimension of the image of God they are representing. Are you listening to me? So love means respect, honor. That's why the Bible says, husbands, love your wives. And what did he tell wives to do? Submit. Why did he say submit? What is the correlation between love and submission? He said, wives, submit. What does it mean to submit? Bring your strength under control. Let the man find a place in the midst of two of you. Because there is a dimension that was created. The best of a man in any family is expressed when there is submission. Men respect those above them. They love those below them. They fight those who claim equality with them. It is a disaster. Are you, are you getting blessed tonight? So, this guy now comes and they are in a relationship, for instance, with this. Both of them were made in his image. But they do not understand what dimension of God's image they are supposed to If this guy understands this teaching, he will know how to relate with this lady. Correct? Now, let's travel a bit to the world of ladies and define love. Now, the brother comes, anointed, tongue-talking, firebrand, is a president. I mean, hold on, I've not finished. Don't laugh too fast because I'm about to say something interesting. Purpose driven. Hallelujah. He's listening to Bishop Oyedeko's messages on dominion, financial prosperity, concrete. He's read all the books. Satan gets lost. He knows how to destabilize things that short destiny. He's a tighter, he's a giver. Now he comes to this lady. Hallelujah. And then he tells her, I love you. 
And the lady says, really? And he feels embarrassed. Because he does not understand what language. To him, his definition of love means I am purpose-driven, I'm filled, I'm responsible. But that means something different in her world. Let's travel to the world of ladies and see what love means for them. Because for a lady, love means three things. One, time. Two, attention. Maximum care and attention. The capacity to satisfy their emotional and psychological needs. Now, I'm not talking about sex. It is the configuration. It's a dimension of God that is obtained. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. Are you getting blessed? When is almost time to tell me? I want to honor God's servant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? And so, this guy and this lady now will ask this brother. Brother, sir. The lady will ask you and say, do you really love me? What he thinks he's saying is, are you really purpose driven? The guy says, yes. Are you joking? I can feed you. I can do this. In fact, I'm a president. No time. This is why she's asking, do you really love me? So she's saying, do you really have that time? Do you really have that capacity to satisfy my emotional and psychological need? Hallelujah. When you are praying and I need someone to talk to, when I call you, are you going to be available or you are still on the mountain? This is what she's asking. Now the guy does not, the guy does not understand the language. Identity crisis. This is one of the reasons why many relationships do not last. Not necessarily because the people are not created in the image of God. They do not know what dimension of God's image. Are you listening to me? So, the lady calls this guy now. And every time you come, you see the guy planning and say, My dear, God just gave me a revelation. This church is going to be mighty. And the lady is just looking. He says, Okay, this church is going to be mighty. It's not his fault. He was designed that way. He finds satisfaction every time there is purpose. A man was designed to be a conqueror. That's why men like football. We like winning. At age 15, a lady is already, she knows her wedding dress. A guy doesn't know his wedding dress until one week to the wedding. He starts thinking, should I use white or purple? At age 15, you are responding to all of these dimensions. At age 12, the guy is playing computer game. We like winning. We like knowing that we can make it. That's why the greatest way to insult a man is to prove to him that he's a failure. He will hate you for life. Hallelujah. You see the women that insult their husbands and say, look at you. Never compare a man with other men. You kill his spirit because he was designed to win. So a great woman who understands this dimension. This is the reason why every time we come to worship God, we touch that dimension. We start calling his name. You start invoking dimensions of God. You prove to him, God, are you not the conqueror that did this and that? Are you not the great? Is that man dimension of God? Suddenly he begins to respond. He repeats what you are thanking him for again. That's the mystery of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Identity crisis been the foundation and even in the church the body of Christ. People it's not enough just to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to be anointed because many families are crashing. Tongue talking believers who love people and it's all these kinds of things. Correct? The composition of a lady is such that a lady is a whole institution. I used to tease my ladies and say which faculty are we in today because you can be in theater arts today and see the lady behaving so nice Next moment, it's as if she's in medicine. So moody, she doesn't even know why she's doing what she's doing. Are you listening to me? I always tell them, so today, which faculty are we in now? Math or theater arts or English? Because a lady is an institution. A guy is fairly... You can buy a lady a gift today and she'll hug you. Tomorrow, she'll stone you with that same gift. Same gift. She doesn't know why. That's why they have unbelievable mood swings. Now we understand their biological additions to that. But I'm saying generally, that's how they are. You better be used to it. Otherwise, don't marry. Period. So, the guy is fine. He's wondering why this lady comes and they are talking and then she makes the hair. The guy is purpose-driven. He's not seeing the guy, we are, we are conquering this. Do you know we have a program today? Let's go to Kwangila. In fact, pastor said something. Do you know what God is doing in my life? This lady has made her hair. You have not loved her as far as she's concerned. You have just been ranting your definition of love from your own world. 
Then an unbeliever comes who is not born again but knows how to define love from a lady's perspective. He comes and before he knows it, he's like, wow, this is green. Ah, uh-uh. ah. So are we, I mean, what's the color of the sky? What should we paint today? As boring as it sounds to you, this is love from her definition. That's why you can see a Christian lady following one brother with his sad jeans. He's not, you see him, this guy is not fine, he's not anything, and you are wondering, what is she seeing? This is it. The capacity to respond to that dimension. And I'll tell you the truth. Christian brothers, we must confess we have not tried in this dimension. Ladies, hold on. I'm, I'm soon going to come to your, your path. So you are not free. Are you learning something? So, the ability to respond to this sister's, to be able to note certain things. She comes with the hair and you're like, wow, wonderful hair. So should I make my own like that? At least you've noticed it. Hallelujah. And it may not mean anything to you, but it means the whole world to them. Now, ladies, you finish laughing. Let brothers, hallelujah. Now, Ria, listen, listen. I've told you that a guy is motivated in an atmosphere that makes him know he's a winner. Are you listening to me? Now, you know that this is a brother. Listen to me. Let me teach you something. Faith is not foolishness. Faith does not negate the law of process. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? The Bible says that there will be an harvest. First, the air, the shoot, and then the corn. Are you listening to me? If you do not understand the law of process, you will begin to put pressure on the guy to define love from your perspective. And so is Valentine. And you are now thinking, every other guy is stealing money from their father and doing everything. And taking the ladies to Shagalinko. And this brother, he does not have the word. He doesn't have any manifestation. But the word is still in him. The word is still working. I know you people don't like that kind of brother. Keep your promises aside and come with a manifestation. If you cannot horn, don't call me. You see, that kind of definition, you are, you are robbing the brother and you are stopping you are stopping yourself from seeing a dimension. A man always wants to win. He wants to know you can love him in the process, his journey to success. If you did not play a role in my journey to success, you have no inheritance in it. That's why Jesus Christ put us in himself by covenant and went through the journey to the cross. When he arrived there, he said, you have a right by covenant to sit with me in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Amount of time. But it's important for you to know. So this lady comes down and tells him, eh, I saw one shoe, honestly. I saw the shoe, so nice. This brother has not eaten. It's just like he didn't tell you. He has finished speaking the word and saying, my destiny. I know my destiny. But he just took one small garden and shared with his friend. Now you are mounting untold pressure upon him. And this guy, now he's thinking. He doesn't want to tell you. And he's attempting to respond to your definition of love. But you are not being fair to respond back to him. Now she's afraid. If he does not respond to your definition of love, he's obviously going to lose you. Because there are many other people who have stolen their father's jeeps around and they are roaming around campus. And you start threatening him. You say, eh, did I even tell you one guy sent me a text? The guy has been worrying me. You are mounting pressure. This is the language you are speaking to the guy. You are a failure and there are options. Should I go? This is a dangerous language. That's the same way people relate with God and it gets him angry. They say, God, if you don't give me these blessings, after two weeks, I will backslide. In other words, you are saying, look, uh, in two weeks, I will conclude whether you are a success or failure. And God tells you, by these two immutable things, I have sworn by an oath and a promise that God cannot lie. Are you listening to me? So, the mutual understanding of these dimensions of God's image that are put in a man and put in a woman, when you relate mutually, you will find out that both of you will present a picture to the world. When men look at you, people see that, oh, so God can have this soft side. Now, you are busy, but one day you just call and say, look, sweetheart, I decided to take this whole day off just for you. I know that you've made a lot of sacrifices and this is my way of honoring you. You have taken that sacrifice to respond. And the lady is grateful. Hallelujah. 
One day you are hungry, you are almost dying. One strand of faith, only you. This lady cooks now and says, I decided to give you a surprise today. There is a mutual word. The guy comes and tells you, see me, my father has already told me that if I must stand on, I must stand in my faith, I will be on my own because I became a Christian, for instance. And he says he's not going to give me anything. And then the lady tells him, say, look, from the day I saw you, I knew you were a winner. This is how a great lady speaks to a guy. She says, look, let me tell you, I don't just love you because of what you can give me. I won't deny that these things don't bless me, but I need you to know that I'm ready to go all the way. This guy will never, no matter what Jezebel meanders her way into his life. Are you listening to me? You have responded in a way that will strengthen. You encourage a man and see how he stands strong. That's why when Nigeria scored, the ladies are just saying, God, this is my head. The guy is shouting gold as if he's the one who scored it. It creates an effect. It reminds him of what he should be like. That's why they can lose a match and a guy is crying. And the lady is saying, why? It is a psychological thing. It reminds him we were designed to win. So sisters, you be careful the way you respond to the brothers. You must treat them with honor and respect. Don't just look and say, this guy, one palm, I know the color, there's even zigzag on it. You calm down. The person you are laughing at today, let me tell you, God is able to. You are here, winners, every week. You are sharing words of prophecy. Do you not know that these words are becoming, the Bible says, if the cloud be full of rain, it will empty itself. Let me tell you something. A brother that may not have money, may not, is going to church every week. He's getting blessed. He's receiving the word. The Bible says, I commend you to the word of God, the word of his grace that is able to make you wise. One, two, to give you an inheritance. Speaking about wisdom, he said, wisdom is the principal thing. Dear, forget wisdom. He said, exalt and she shall promote you. She shall put an ornament, a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her. Speaking about wisdom, he said, with me reigns riches and wealth. Yea, durable riches. So you see a man that is taking the wisdom of the spirit. He's an asset on his way to happen. You must discern from the eyes of the spirit. This brother is praying and fasting. Moving. He has some little money and he gets up. He says, I will use this as Shiloh sacrifice. You are saying, look at him. Your colleagues are looking nice. He's making an investment for his tomorrow. Any right thinking lady should be able to encourage him and say, look, let me tell you something. I may not see where you are going, but I know that God, who is the surety of the principles you are following, will make sure you don't become a failure. Let's work together. This is how to respond. Are you listening to me? You come in and a guy, although he's an usher, he opens the door for you. Don't just walk in and say, wow, I'm treated like a queen. Yes, but respond immediately to him too. Good evening, sir. Many times people come to see me and I already know them. Pastors come to see me for counseling or something or just to come and talk. And when they come, you know, we men of God have ways of trying to show that me too, I'm a man of God. Or me too, I have my own territory. It's in the nature of a man. So every time they are coming, before they reach to me, I walk up to them and I say, good evening, sir. Immediately, they are compelled to respond back. This is someone who will probably say, yes, how are you? My name is this and that and that. In other words, me too, I know the word. Oh, don't open eyes for me here. It's in our nature as guys and men. So when you see, be the first to respond. The first person to submit in that group becomes king over all. Because it will compel all. Let me tell you something, friends. If you know this secret, you will be a leader everywhere you go. That's why Jesus said, the greatest among you, if you want to take advantage of men, submit. You want to paralyze a man, submit to him. He will feel stupid treating you harsh. That's why when a man slaps a lady, people say, Haba, bros, look at you, see this lady. And the guy stands there embarrassed. He hates himself. He's wondering, when did my hand slap this lady? Because you just compared him to the lady and he remembers. So when you try to contend and brag with a guy, you are fighting. There is a conflict. It's like electric spark. That's what makes the guy to react. So whether it's through slapping, through speaking, through not talking, it's a way of letting you know that you are robbing me of a dimension that needs to find expression. Hallelujah. And for the ladies, guys, 
I have come to find out that not every lady is materialistic. There are ladies who genuinely want love. They are ready to walk. Forget about what Nigerian film tells people. They just make every lady look like she's just a money monger. Mat. It's not true. It's not true. Ah, sisters are my friends this night. I wish it was a dinner. I would have been sure of a meal. Hallelujah. I have found out that there are sisters. They have not forgotten that when they were born, it was pot with three legs that they were using to cook. They are their boys, God's grace. That met them in the university. You can change the future, but you cannot change history. The memory of that black pot is still in them. So they have the when they pretend like they cannot endure, they can. It's just that you have lied as a brother and said your father sent you Jeep. They said, Oh, why should I ride a bicycle when there is a Jeep? Bring the Jeep. Now you are under pressure to defend the lies that you started with. But if you will be honest and genuine, these ladies are strong. They may look weak, but they can stand. At least I can testify for Christian ladies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, gentlemen, say after me in the name of Jesus. I'm a responsible man. I was built with an image of responsibility. All the guys say after me, I'm a winner. No, no, no. I don't just mean belonging to a winner's fellowship. Say, I'm a winner. I was born for a reason. I have a destiny in Christ. I was designed to be a star. Nothing can limit me. Not my past. Not the challenges of yesterday. The word of God is before me. The spirit of faith is in me. And by the grace of God, the sky is only a starting point. Do you believe what you just said? Yes. Yes. This is not just motivation. I'm speaking to your spirit man. You were designed. You may have only one shoe. You don't need to tell lies and try to create an impression. He said, but I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able. There was a day in my life When I could not afford, I've said it everywhere I go, I could not afford a meal of 30 naira. Hallelujah. Everybody you see successful today had a story, let me tell you. A man who got success without a story is just a mirage. The story is about to come. Run away quick. I remember times when I would use bread and put granite inside. Don't pretend like you're not doing it. I will put granite inside the bread and buy ginger, 10 naira. I remember, I will lift it and say, I turn this into communion. Since I can't even afford the food, let me not waste the spiritual process. And I'll sing. He lead me and guide me to the city up above. I saw it in my visions. While I did not have that, I said I would not compromise my character. No telling lies. I stand as a man. I was created to endure. The capacity to go through pressure is called courage. Many people have lost their identity. Tonight, I'm speaking to you prophetically. Leave those false lies and take on a posture that you were designed. I knew when nobody would invite me for any meeting, didn't have a ministry, didn't have anything. The first time the Lord told me to go to a state for a crusade. We were just few. We didn't have much. But I said, Lord, I have nothing but the faith of the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I will stand. After the first crusade, I was in debt of 150,000. It looks like a small amount now. Some of you were born in, in AC. Hallelujah. I couldn't pay for it. But with the tears in my eyes, Yes, it's not a sign of weakness. It's a symbol of strength sometimes. And I stood, I said, Lord, I know that you are faithful and your word is true. Every time a man of God was about to prophesy, whenever I went for meetings, let me tell you the truth. When I went for meetings, I didn't just go for entertainment. Others were laughing, but my spirit was open. Every time there was a word, I said, this is me. I know that this word is for me. And today, to the glory of God, the glory of his majesty gentlemen the world is squeezing men to assume another identity and posture you must run away from it it's in the media, it's everywhere 
Hallelujah. And there are tribes that teach men your job is just to sleep with the woman once she has a child as a business. If she doesn't go and look for food, your own girl will force her. You see, that's not a true identity. Anywhere you are as a man, take on that posture of responsibility. Hallelujah. That fatherhood heart will make you concerned. Don't sit down. Someone has not eaten and you don't care. You just look. Uh -uh. You are not ready to be a father. That's why there are many small children getting married in homes. And they don't know what is happening. They get up and they are just playing Tom and Jerry at home. Because they were deceived by Nigerian kings, deceived by Mr. Biggs and Chicken Republic. Wake up, believers. There is an identity. You were made in the image of Christ. I'm speaking to you guys. None of you here is a failure, except you choose to be. I don't care what your CGPA is. or All these things attempt to squeeze you out of that mold that God has put you, but you must refuse. And tell yourself, as surely as the Lord lives, I will not only lead. The Bible talking about Ahasuerus. He said he was a leader over over a hundred provinces. Dominion. Bishop Oedeko says it all the time. Dominion. I was created to dominate. I've told myself there is nothing I cannot do in this life. Why? Because I'm a man. Created in the image of Christ. I have a responsibility to reveal that dimension. There are no impossibilities in my world. Not with the power of faith. I know that I have the word of God. You don't need to brag and make noise about it. The Bible says, let her walk, speak for her at the gate. There are too many talkatives in the body of Christ. If you have results, it cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. And then ladies, for you, refuse it. We live in a materialistic world. We live in a world that is driven by all kinds of lust for different things. You sit down, you don't have, you have 1,000 naira. Instead of you to buy a book that will build your destiny, you want to be the first person to launch a Brazilian hair around. Calm down. Don't steal what is already your own. You will get there. Even if it's only one shirt, don't be under pressure. It's, the ladies are even under more pressure. In fact, many ladies have shifted from the original portrait of their design. Everybody wants to be everything. If you don't have your Mary Kay and your Gucci rush, people say you are a local chick. Hold on. They should ride on. Tomorrow, when they look at you and say, Ma, God will just carry you and join with a successful man. Listen, if this lady is a sweeper in this auditorium and I'm an owner of the auditorium, if I marry her, what is her new name? Answer me. Madam, whether you like it or not, that's not the issue. She has the right to fire you in an instant. You were colleagues last week. That's the mystery and the strength behind a woman. It's easier for God to change your story. But can I tell you something? While you are waiting for the man or generally in your life, you must begin to study and make yourself a virtuous woman. Maybe another time I'll teach. I did a series of teaching on the heart of a husband a father and a minister. This is the tripartite nature of man that he must release. So you are not just a good minister and a bad husband or a good husband and a bad father. And then the heart of a wife, the heart of a woman, a mother, and the heart of a minister. There are ladies today when you see a small boy poop outside, you're like, yeah, yeah, you want to marry with this childish attitude. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? A lady comes to see there are guys all around and they are eating. Maybe in a fellowship like this, they say, Sab, and you are the one making noise and talking in the midst of the guys. This and that and that. You even push one guy and the guys are looking at you. They are saying, Lord, thank you for this revelation. Off I go. Because you just showed that you were a man. And a man was not designed to relate with another man. But you imagine a lady... The moment you see men like this, you serve them. And there's someone, have you eaten? No, you are doing this. Let me tell you something with brothers. We have eyes everywhere. This is not our only eyes. I can be like this, but I'm seeing you. Brothers can see. Sisters learn that today. Brothers can what? Many people look, but brothers see. So, you are sitting down. And you are, I mean, you are helping to serve. You are doing everything. A gentleman comes and there's no sitter. He says, sir, please, can you sit down? Other ladies say, why are you desperate? Must everybody know you want a husband? Calm down. You wait and see the kind of... Because that's the mindset that is given to ladies. We call virtue desperation. 
So once you see a lady demonstrating uncommon virtue, even her, she begins to feel foolish. So a guy will come and you'll just be cheap like that. I beg, let the guy know. You see, you learned that from somewhere. Someone told you. When he fell and Adam, God said, who told you you were naked? In other words, that report came from somewhere. Certainly not from the word. You must kick it out. Sarah called her husband Lord. It's not a sign of weakness. Can I tell you something? The one who submits is the greater one. Husbands, love your wives as Christ. Love the church. Who is greater? Christ. But he was the one who loved the church. So ladies, learn to treat men with respect and honor. Don't be the one standing to argue with a guy and say, see me, let me tell you. I'm even beating my chest and the guy is saying, Jesus Christ. He's just imagining that you are his wife and two of you woke up in the morning and say, if this money doesn't come out today. And that's how the guy passed. We are going to pray. I hope you got something this night. Sister, may the Lord bless you and increase you. May he make you a woman of virtue in the name of Jesus Christ. My brother, may the Lord make you a great man in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray. Please rise up on your feet. Two prayer points and I'm out. Hallelujah. The first prayer point, listen please, is we are going to open up ourselves. Listen. And we are going to pray and say, Lord, help me. There are mindsets I've gotten about myself that are not consistent with the word. For instance, Ladies, that submission is desperation. That's a demonic teaching. That's a demonic teaching. Ladies, you must assume that posture of meekness. The Bible says it. You are revealing a dimension of God as a meek one. As a loving God. Learn to care for people. We have a world where they say ladies first. And you just feel you are everything. And you just belittle every guy and everybody. Lambast everybody because 20 guys flash you per day. 20 guys call. And you say, I don't have time for all these kind of people. Stop it. Oh. People made noise like you and today they are humble. Life has a way of punishing pride. Listen now. Don't let campus deceive you. There are many talkatives who have gone before you. And have said all kinds of things. God forbid. You see a brother coming and he say, is he coming to buy land or is he coming to ask me out? Let him pass. So the way he carried his rickety jeans to come. The same man, tomorrow you will come to look for a job and find out he's the one in the office. And you say, I remember you. And you will feel so embarrassed and ashamed. This world is a small place. Learn wisdom tonight. We are going to pray. Lift your voice and say, Lord, take away from me any mindset that came from the world system and it's not consistent with the word of God. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare, lift your voice and pray, are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. He said, I'm bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Sisters pray, brothers pray. The mindset that is built upon lies and falsehood. That's not your identity. Be yourself. Strive. Endure pain. The Bible says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory in us. You may not be it now. Keep speaking the word. Keep living by faith. Walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity. Knowing this, that God is faithful to bring a performance in your life. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I take away, in the name of Jesus, mindset that have redefined me outside of your image. You have created a portrait for me as a lady. You have created a portrait for me as a man. And as a gentleman, I get back into that mode. Guys, pray. The spirit of responsibility. Stop behaving like children. One day you will you will be the head of a family. You will be the head of a woman. Take responsibility. Buy books. Study. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. He said when I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. Some of you need to kick away childishness. 
delete all those ungodly songs in your phone and begin to put messages, destiny building messages that will make you become a man. Your family will thank you for it. Your generation will thank you. Lift up your voice, guys, and pray and say, I will not fail. I was designed to succeed. The anointing of God is upon me. In the name of Jesus, it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Ladies, pray. Say, I'm a woman of virtue. I adorn my life with meekness. From today, I, I assume a posture of love and submission. I take away pride. I now see that it's not desperation. It's a character of a woman of virtue. The Bible says, who can find a woman of virtue? Say, our price is beyond ruby. Created in his image. Say, Lord, I was made for your image. I won't give myself to any man. I won't give myself to any man in an attempt to reveal my, 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 my worth. Make up your mind to be disciplined, guys. It's a dimension of God's image in you. You can't run for everything. Every party, every this. No. Take responsibility. If no one told you, unfortunately, families are supposed to be the center through which men are built. They receive mentorship and guidance. But most of our families right now are an aberration. But God is using this program to remedy for what you have not heard. If no one has told you, share it today. Take responsibility for your life and your destiny. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. This is a relationship teaching. This is the last prayer point. You're going to vow, ladies, that your children, your husband, will call you blessed. Hallelujah. You're going to say, Lord, whatever it takes, I will buy the books. Many of you need to go to the winner's library or the Dominion Bookshop in, 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 in Guangila or anywhere. Get books that mold you. Don't just sit there and say, when will the guy come? Are you really prepared for him? Although Esther was a pretty lady, she was not yet fit for the king. The Bible said for one year, she kept adorning herself with a kind of oil until after one year she was fit. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Guys, pray and say, I'm a, I'm a husband, I'm a father with dignity. I begin to walk like a responsible man. Pray and say, I deliver myself from childishness. In the name of Jesus. Wasting financial resources anyhow. Buying things you do not need. To are in an attempt to prove a point to people on campus that you are successful. Say, Lord, I invest in my future. I want to be a gentleman who is responsible. This is the image of God. The Bible says any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel. Say, from today, I lay aside childishness. From today, I break away from childish associations. Godless associations that will not make me become a man of character, a man of grace, receive grace to go through pressure. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sorry, I've taken time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, I bless your people. I pray that men and women of character and grace will be fashioned from this fellowship. In the name of Jesus, let this message find a place in your sons and daughters. I prophesy to you, sisters, you will never lack your mate. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break you free from every ordinance of darkness that attempts to keep you in delay. I release you into your prophetic destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, reveal that image of Christ that reveals meekness, tenderness, love and care. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any other identity you have that is not consistent with God's word, I command it out of your life in Jesus' name. And for brothers, I pray, grace to go through pressure. That resilience grace, in the name of the Lord Jesus, grace to take responsibility for your life and destiny. Grace to dominate, break through every barrier until you emerge a champion. I release it in the name of Jesus. And I bless this fellowship. Lord, bless this fellowship. In the name of Jesus. Let there be numerical increase. Let there be financial increase. Let there be spiritual increase. Let there be love and leadership. I pray for the leaders. You are strong men. In the name of Jesus. Like the men of David, you are strong men. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. God bless you.